This event is gonna go down in history as a game-changing moment. That might sound like I'm being hyperbolic or exaggerating, but I can guarantee you that I'm not. Everyone is familiar with the rolling blackouts in places like California or the storm blackouts in places like Texas where over 5 million businesses lost power and at least 58 people died. Because of those blackouts, many people had no way to heat their houses, which were traditionally heated through electricity, and with temperatures well below zero at times, that can put people in desperate situations. My sister lives in Texas and she was without power for a few days and it caused some serious issues because they didn't have have any heat. Just last year in my home state of Washington, we had a pretty severe heat wave and so the utility companies started using rolling blackouts because the electricity demand was too high to meet. Because of that, officials said that a dozen people died due to that intense heat. And Washington isn't even known for its electric problems or its heat waves. California has way more severe issues. For many people, these events have caused a realization that they don't want to be entirely dependent on the electrical grid for their electricity needs, or at the very least, they want some sort of a backup. These black and brown outs are quite literally killing people. And while the reason they keep happening can be complicated, it's usually tied to one single issue. Right now, our grid is based on a one-to-one -one electricity production and consumption system. Meaning if you plug in your AC unit and turn it on, at that very instant, a power plant has to be providing at least that much electricity. If there isn't quite enough electricity to go around, bad things happen like black and brownouts. The current solution, and I wish I was making this up, but I'm not, it's to overproduce to an extreme degree. The general idea is that while overproducing is inefficient, underproducing causes blackouts, which is much worse, and that makes total sense. And it kind of sounds like we have too much demand and not enough supply, but that's really not the case. The real problem is the timing of the demand. This right here is the electricity demand curve over the course of a day, and they call it the duck curve. You have peak demand in the morning, and then a dip, and then another peak demand basically when everyone's getting off work. The problem with this is that in order to be efficient, power plants like to run 24 seven, which is a flat line of supply curve, meaning that because of the demand peaks, they have to produce at least to those peaks, but they like to run efficiently, so they run 24 seven, and then that's really inefficient because they're overproducing for all the other times of the day when there isn't that demand. Another part of it is that during the winter, electricity usage is generally less than in the summer because air conditioning uses so much electricity. So basically the problem is there's a lot of fluctuation throughout the day and throughout the seasons as far as electricity demand, but power plants run most efficiently and really only like to produce in flat line demand curves. One of the primary tools that we use right now to deal with peak demand times are called peaker plants. These are basically power plants that we only turn on right at peak demand to make sure we have enough electricity. The problem is that peaker plants are incredibly inefficient. Most estimates say that peaker plants are many times less efficient than traditional power plants that run 24 seven. That inefficiency means electricity prices skyrocket. To make matters worse, in many places, these peaker plants are in low income and minority communities, and they've been linked to extensive health issues such as asthma, heart disease, and premature birth rates. Long story short, Peaker plants are an absolutely terrible solution because the problem isn't demand, it's inconsistent demand. And any type of power plant, peakers included, are really bad at being flexible while also being efficient. The point being, our current system is just horrible. We have massive issues with blackouts, which kill people. We run peaker plants, which are linked directly to health issues. And of course, the majority of this electricity is produced with fossil fuels, which aren't renewable. So here's where Tesla's latest innovation comes in. They're calling it the virtual power plant, but basically what it is, is it's a software system that connects their current Powerwall owners and allows them to start sending power back to the grid in the event that the grid needs power. And I wanna be clear, Tesla did not come up with this idea. It's been around forever and companies such as Sunrun or Green Mountain Power in Vermont have already implemented similar programs. The difference is that Tesla has a few major advantages over their companies, which we're gonna get into later on in this video. Going back to the duck curve we talked about earlier, this virtual power plant in theory can pump electricity back into the grid during peak demand, essentially lowering the demand that traditional power plants have to meet. And the best part about this is, they'll be stabilizing the grid with almost entirely solar powered electricity. For a while now, Tesla has bundled their power wall with their solar roof, meaning owners of a power wall are likely to also have solar panels. 
But one of the coolest parts of this technology is that without producing a single kilowatt more of electricity, it can dramatically stabilize the grid. The simple explanation is that even without solar panels, these batteries can charge during the middle of the night when electricity is cheap because demand is so low, then pump that electricity back into the grid during peak hours, which flattens out the demand curve. Like we talked about earlier, traditional power plants are good at producing a set stable amount of electricity and their use alongside this virtual power plant enables a more stable entire grid system. This sounds great and all, but why would people volunteer to give away their electricity when they need it most? Well, we could say it's to help our neighbors and that we all want to do good in the world, and that's true to some extent, but it's also because money. Uh, money. <laughs> right now, Tesla is offering $2 per kilowatt hour that your Powerwall delivers during a power event. That's about 20 times the current national average electricity cost, which needless to say, that's pretty motivating. Tesla says Powerwall owners who opt into this program can expect to see between $10 and $60 per event. The virtual power plant has been rolled out in most of California, but it's expected to come to more regions soon. And it's already been used in one power outage event. As we shift towards using more and more renewable energies, the need for a grid scale storage solution is growing. And with their VPP, Tesla is lining themselves up to be a leader in this industry. From a revenue standpoint, Tesla could in theory license or sell their VPP software to other energy companies for royalty payments due to their commanding software lead. And while doing that, they can be making a small cut on each kilowatt hour being sold back to the utility companies. The revenue potential here is huge. And for everyone that's still saying that Tesla is a car company, I'm looking at you, Gordon Johnson. This is a clear example of how Tesla is using their industry leading software and hardware to continue to expand into new revenue sectors. And maybe the best part about their VPP from a Tesla investor side is that they don't need to roll out any expensive hardware. All they have to do is keep doing what they're doing, which is selling power walls and solar and mega packs. And this new software makes their already existing hardware much more valuable. And for each subsequent power wall that they sells, their VPP gets bigger and therefore more valuable. It's weirdly kind of similar to full self-driving in a way where having a Tesla car all of a sudden becomes a huge revenue potential, not because of any new hardware, but because of new software. And this VPP enables Powerwall owners to do just that, make more revenue with their already existing hardware. The only real problem I see with this is that Tesla is already significantly supply constrained. And if they keep releasing new and better products, they keep increasing their demand, which they're already not capable of meeting. But as far as problems go, it's a really good problem to have. Make no mistake, this is an absolutely huge deal and it is going to make Tesla loads of revenue. The fact that the mainstream media has remained basically silent on this just goes to show how corrupt they are, but that's a story for another time. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you liked the video, give me a like and subscribe. If you loved the video, think about tossing some support my way on Patreon, but only if you have the spare income. If you need the money, please keep it for yourself. Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation or taking advantage of consumers or whatever it is, send it my way. My info, like always, is down below. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you on the next one. Peace. Thank you.